With more than 50 apps down, we've just got a few more to go. But to find them, we may need to travel to the dark side of the app force. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4E Tech, and this is the final chapter of What's on My Smartphone. <laughs> So here we go with the season finale of What's On My Smartphone. Get ready for a huge cliffhanger at the end. If you're late to this party, you've already missed three episodes, so click the links in the description and I'll see you in about 30 minutes. We have covered almost everything of interest on my phone now, save for a few unique apps I'm going to finish off with. And we'll start with car to go Now imagine this, you need to get somewhere quickly but you don't have a car and you could be waiting ages for a taxi. Well, Vancouver has several what you would call short-term rent-a-car services. car to go is one such service and you use the app to find cars in your area that you can reserve and then use to drive around the city. It costs around 12 US dollars an hour, so it's cheaper than a taxi and really quite convenient when plans change at short notice. But obviously and unfortunately, this is limited to a select few cities in North America and Europe. To find some more intriguing apps, we need to delve into my app drawer, and there we'll find Google's gateway to affordable virtual reality. Google Cardboard provides you with the basic tools for VR at a cost of around $10. I'm yet to be convinced that VR will ever be mainstream, but as an example of what it can do, this is me using a prototype VR trigger called the Revolver to shoot some zombies. Now for something a little more practical. It can be annoying when you accidentally swipe away notifications with no undo button or historical way of retrieving those notifications. Well, that's no longer the case with an app called Notiflog that archives every single notification you get or lets you choose what to archive and for how long. A very useful utility tool, that one. And finally on my smartphone, in certain countries, Google will send you money if you're willing to answer surveys through the Google Opinion Rewards application. With the app installed, every so often you'll be sent a very quick survey, usually about your social habits and shops you've recently visited, since Google tracks where your phone is. They usually consist of 3 to 10 questions and take no longer than 5 minutes to complete. Every time you do one, you get store credit to use on Google Play to buy apps and games. If you're prepared to accept a somewhat invasive application, that's a fair trade and the money soon adds up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much everything you need to know about what's on my smartphone. However, I suspect you've got a lingering question. Where are all my games? Well, I save all that for my iPad mini, which obviously has the bigger screen, so here's a brief journey into the land of iOS. Now, just before I show you any games, here's how you directly record off an iOS screen. This is a pretty big deal since Apple have never officially supported this, and previously you could only achieve it through jailbreaking your device. But now there's a free non-jailbroken method that requires just one app called Airshow, which you can't download from the Apple Store, but there is a link in the video description just under the like button. Once installed, it will record your screen directly, just like Android, meaning I can use the same tricks and techniques you've seen throughout this series. So with that brief introduction out of the way, let's delve into a few games. First up we have Twinkle Twinkle, a double thumb controlled space shooter very much in the mould of Geometry Wars, the only difference being it doesn't cost a single penny. The left touch control moves your ship around while the right touch control directs your fire. As you earn more stars you can use them to upgrade your ship and with this being an arcade style shooter high scores are very much the aim of the game. There is only one game mode and it's nowhere near as visually compelling as Geometry Wars but as copycats go this is a good one. For those at 20 to 30 second fixes, my game of choice is Colour Switch. All you need to do is tap on the screen to bounce your object through coloured shapes when you match that colour. It requires quick reflexes and a lot of patience and every time I return to the game after a break, new game modes and levels are added. This for example is gravity where the direction of the level changes to mess with your sensors. In addition to the addictive gameplay that keeps you coming back for just one more go, Colour Switch comes with an awesome soundtrack, full of addictive beats which deserves a little bit of uninterrupted airtime. Now, I must confess I do like my dual thumb shooters, so Space Cowboys is up next. 
This has quite an involved campaign mode that sees you working your way through isometric maps to complete mission objectives that usually involve finding items and killing everyone. Throughout the game you can upgrade weapons, find hidden treasures and try to complete missions perfectly in order to unlock extra items. I think the actual aim of this game is to stealth your way through the missions, but I like to go in all guns blazing with the most powerful weapons, because I've turned into the very thing I used to despise, a casual gamer. All I want is a quick fix without too much thought and planning and this serves my needs nicely. And this leaves me with just one more game, the game that pretty much everyone has played over the last couple of years. That jingle must be one of the most familiar and famous in gaming now since it pings into life every time you open Clash of Clans. And I open it frequently to continue building my base, upgrading my units and attacking clans whenever I have the opportunity. Now Clash of Clans is a bit like cricket in the sense that nothing happens for ages and ages and then suddenly everything kicks off all at once. That tends to be completing your barracks after a two day build just to get the healing unit or waiting an entire week to upgrade your town hall just so you can build more mines. Now I'm certainly no master of Clash and Clans, I'm still working my way through the single player levels but there's something very addictive about micromanaging your village for two or three minutes in the morning before returning to see the results last thing at night. We've been everywhere on this journey, from weather widgets to power toggles, from podcast addicts to clash of clans, and from smart watches to smart lights. Smartphones are so much a part of our lives these days that they bring with them their own stories. And while you might think my story of ancient apps and cluttered home screens is crazy, it makes sense to me and my world, just as your smartphone fits into your world. So share your stories, the apps you like, the style you dress your device in, and the things that make your smartphone a part of your digital soul. As for my story, well it's always evolving, or upgrading in this case. I've joined 2016 and grabbed myself a Samsung Galaxy S7, which I'm promptly going to drag back into the Stone Ages by installing all of this crap I've just been talking about. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon. Enjoy the rest of your tech day.